<laughs> people don't understand their natural advantages yeah. and they don't use them. So th that's that's bad, number one. But worse, number two, is they don't, if you don't think you're a good ice skater or if you're convinced you're not a good cellist, you're not going out and try it. But people are buying stocks anyway. They're not discouraged. They just think it's a gamble. So therefore, they go forward and they, they bet on one stock for a week and a half and it goes up and they, they make two dollars on it. Then they sell it and they buy something else. When three years is over, all they've done is generate a lot of commissions. And they've probably lost money. That's a mistake. So your, your philosophy is, is simple, and I'm remembering this from the previous book. I right. think we're now talking about the previous book. Correct. Your Correct. philosophy was if you find something that you identify with. I remember Correct. there was a story yep. of yep. your wife and her hose. Yep. Your wife kept oh, saying, legs these are panties. Oh, you legs, got it. Yep. Yeah, legs and panties. Your wife said, these are the greatest <laughs> things I've ever seen. Right. right. And when your wife said that, you knew that this was a product that right. was better. Right. You used to stay at La Quinta Motel. Right. And the right. service yeah. was better, yeah. whatever was yeah. better. Right. The and price so, is good. And though. the price was good, too. Yeah. And you yeah. said, this is a place right. that I can determine. Right. I, Peter right. Lynch, right. Right. can tell that this is a good product, right? That's right. And if these people make it a good product, then their earnings are going to go up. Therefore, the stock's going to go up. And that's the kind of decision-making process you ought to go through. Right. Do I have it? You've got it exactly right. Well, I, do, I don't think people understand there's a hundred percent correlation with what happens to a company's earnings over several years and what happens to the stock. If the company, McDonald's, has done very well as a company, right. the stock has done very well. People worry about too much money supply, what's happened to the price of oil, whether, who's the president, it's, who's being nominated for the Supreme Court, it's all the ozone earnings. layer, there's nothing to do. McDonald's earnings go up the next 10 years, the stock will go yeah, up. But what they will say to you, Peter, is that, as you know, and why am I telling you this, but anyway, it's fun to tell you this, they're telling you that these other things influence the amount of earnings of a particular company. Yeah. If we're in a recession, That's people right. are not going to spend That's as right. much money on going to the movies Absolutely. or whatever they do, right, right. And, and therefore you've got to pay attention to these right. other things because yep. they impact on earnings. They are very important, but you have no idea of knowing what they're going to do. Alan right. Greenspan is the head of the Federal Reserve. Right. He cannot predict interest rates. Yes. He'd be the first to tell He can you. influence them, but he can't predict them. He cannot predict what long-term interest rates are going to be one year from now, two years from now, three years from now. He's even surprised how low they are now. Right. So how am I supposed to predict interest rates? How am I supposed to predict the economy? You certainly remember the recession of 82. Yeah. 1982, we had a 20% prime rate, 14% unemployment, 12% inflation. I don't remember anybody telling me in 1980 or 81 that was going to happen. Yeah. All of a sudden, we had the worst recession since the Depression. I didn't read about it in the paper. So it's crazy to think about these things. Here's a quote from you. I own Dunkin' Donuts. When you own Dunkin' Donuts, you don't have to worry about Korean imports. You don't have to worry about M2 or M3. These are money supply figures, right. aren't they? Yep. And, and what's happening to the money supply? This is the way you make money. If you don't understand what the company does, you should not be in it. If you could predict the stock market, you could predict the economy, you could predict interest rates. If you go buy the wrong stocks, you're going to lose half your money anyway. Right. You, I, I'm saying people have natural advantages. Yeah. Let's say what you do for a living is you're involved in the restaurant industry. Right. You supply paper products. You, right. you supply kitchen equipment. You help build restaurants. Right. You saw McDonald's. You saw Chi Chi's. You saw Chili's. You saw Cracker Barrel. You saw Dunkin' Donuts, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taco Bell. These are all these success were, stories. These were 40, 40 fold. You made 40 or 50 times your yeah. money. You don't need to make that kind of money many times your life, right? Yeah, no, no. That's all you had to do was follow the restaurant industry. Yeah. People are in industries. They're in the publishing industry. They're in the chemical industry. The paper. Why don't they just stay with that industry? You only need a few stocks a decade. How many good stocks do you need in a lifetime? <laughs> Instead of people, they're in the restaurant industry. They're buying biotechnology stocks. Right. The people in the chemical and they industry. Know nothing about know nothing biotech. About the people in the chemical industry are buying oil stocks. Right. It's absolutely absurd. So your advice is what? If you don't understand a company, yeah. if you can't explain it to a ten-year-old right. in two minutes or less, <laughs> yes. don't own it. Because when it goes down, let's say the stock goes down two points. You won't understand what's going on. Do, what do you do? Do you buy more? Do you do you yeah. do you flip and, a coin? And chances are your broker doesn't either. You, they, he, he or she certainly doesn't know yeah. about it. <laughs> I mean, who knows what advance? Yeah. What all these things are with auto back planes and mega flops? Who knows what all yeah. these? So buy what are. you know. Buy in your industry, buy what you know, buy local companies. Yeah, so, so suppose you you don't have an industry. I mean, you know, you don't really... You, well, you buy com local companies. Right. Companies in your own industry. Ten years after Walmart went public. Ten years after Walmart. Went public, ten years after it went public. It's a 25-year-old company now. Right. You could have bought the stock and made 50 times your money on it. 50 times. This is, if you bought it ten years after... After it, it was public already. Yeah. It had already gone up five-fold. So you could have made 250-fold. But I'm saying, let's say you were in a town. They came into it and they said, Boy, these prices are great. They're doing terrific. Yeah. I like the bargains. And you checked it out. You spent a little bit of work on it. Yeah. I mean, people are very careful. They, when they buy a dishwasher, they do some research. They'll put $10,000 in some right. stock they hear on a bus. 
So if you did a little bit of research, you'd say, Walmart's in only 10% of the country. They're not even saturated there. Why can't they go to the rest of the country? He claims that we're going to do more investing and less spending. Right. I mean, that statement, you can't argue with. Less consumption, more saving. You absolutely have to invest more in education. You have to invest more in companies. You have to invest less in just spending money. I mean, today, people are encouraged to spend. You spend money. Let's say you put an addition on your house. Right. You spend money on that. That you can get a tax deduction because, it, because it, you know, the interest on it is tax deductible. Mm -hmm. If you invest, if you take your money and put it in the bank, you're taxed at a very high rate. They have this incredibly unfair term. It's called unearned income. When you, every time I do all the income taxes, and I fill out the, the number for what you made, the money you put in the bank, it's crazy. called unearned income. What a t it's, it's an insulting term. But anyway, if you, if you buy a stock and you make money on it, you pay a 28% tax on it. Yeah. Guess what the capital gains rate is in Japan? Uh, capital gains rate in Japan is 10%. Zero. Zero. Right. I mean, we're not encouraging people to save. We're not encouraging people to invest. So we're you're encouraging in people the, to spend. You're in favor of the elimination of the capital gains tax that, that Bush proposed. Reducing it or eliminating it. And I'm glad that Clinton didn't raise it. I right. mean, he raised other taxes. He's, this fairness thing, I understand. Uh, and, and what about this tax the rich business? You, you buy that? Oh, I think fairness, it's a debate what's fair. I think, I certainly think raising taxes is appropriate if it's same time yeah. you cut the spending it's a lot easier to raise taxes than cut spending if we can cut spending and get government's share of the gross national product reduced it'll be fair when you were actively managing money you presumably were under the same pressures as other fund managers to show performance results right. did that incline you to sell too quickly sometimes well, i think my greatest mistakes are I mean, you know it's, it's funny on a stock all you can lose is 100 percent i've done that but your great mistakes is selling a good company and then doubles, then it triples and quadruples because you make a lot of mistakes. And so it's ones that go up tenfold, I call them the ten baggers. So some of my mistakes are just saying, oh my God, this stock is too high. And I was wrong. And you had to figure out what inning am I in this baseball game? I sold Toys R Us way too early. It went up twenty-fold after I sold. I did the same thing at Home Depot. Those are probably my two greatest mistakes I ever made. When should you sell? Well, you ought to find out why you bought a stock. If you're saying it's a cyclical company and they're doing poorly and they're doing awful, you wait till things are getting better and they're doing terrific, and then you sell it. But with a growth company, you have to say, Walmart's case, 10 years after they went public, you could have bought the stock and made 500 times your money. You see, still are only in 15% of the United States. And you, they could say, why can't they go to 17? Why can't they go to 19? Why can't they go to 23? So for the next four decades, they went around the country. So you have to say to yourself, in this stock, I have a 10-year story, a 20-year story. I'll be able to write that down and follow that. And that's what I do with the company. And that's your decision. That's how you sell it. We have a novel element for mo many investors today in the trust issue. Yes. We also have security problems that we didn't traditionally yeah, right. have in America. Have they changed the way you pick and believe in stocks? No, I, you still buy a company, and you buy a company to grow. And if it's a textile company or it's an electronics company or software company, you better understand what they do. And, and if they do well, the stock will do well, no matter what happens to the market. If the Dow Jones today was 1,000 or 500, you would have made a lot of money in McDonald's. You would have made a lot of money in Johnson Johnson. You would have made a lot of money in Gillette. These companies' earnings have gone up a lot the last 30 years. And if the market was 50,000, you would have lost money in Burlington Industries. I recommended that in 1969. I think it's, I think it's gone from 34 to 2 with no stock splits. These earnings have been terrible. Well, your modesty actually makes an important point, which is people with the best batting averages in the world don't bat 1,000. I sometimes get angry mail, particularly during bear markets, saying so-and-so recommended such and such, and it went down. Yeah. Well, uh, how often did you come up with a clinker? Well, this, this is a funny business. You don't have to be right even five times out of 10. If the times you're right, you make a double and triple, it offsets all those times you lose 20 or 30%. So when you buy a stock, you ought to say to yourself, how much can I lose and how much can I make? And you ought to be able to make a lot. You see, stocks are risky. I mean, look, look at how much we lost on at and Look at how much we lost in Xerox. These were quality companies. You know, you can lose a lot in a stock. So you got to say to yourself, how much can I make? Because I want to buy a stock. If I'm right, I'm going to make a double or triple. Does your own confidence ever get shaken? Every day, I think the market's going to go up. You know? <laughs> I keep calling a lot of my companies. So I keep calling the company.